when he came here, it's hard to find a way. First time, I don't think I can do it, but I wanted to try it. It may not come out as what he wanted, I don't know, but I'm trying the best. See here, it's still, mm -hmm. it's, it was said that, you know, they left the kids behind and just lost, you know, young life like that. It's just not, it's just not right, I think, you know. They're the only husband and wife ever killed in the civil rights movement. The Moors were the first NAACP workers to be killed for their work in civil rights. Mr. Moore and Ms. Moore were just ordinary people who did extraordinary things because the time called for it. When Mr. Moore came to Brevard County, he came with a history of knowledge of privilege, which means that he had lived other places and he had seen African Americans who were prominent in business, who were prominent in the government and that sort of thing. When he came to Brevard County, he did not see that. He first um, got involved through education. I mean, he became a school teacher, got married, the second year he was there, they had a family, uh, had two daughters. And uh, he became the principal of what was known as the Titusville Colored School. And I think over a period, really, the next 10 years, he saw the inequities that existed in education, which was his great passion and love. People remember taking classes from him, and the black schools would get the hand-me-down materials from the white schools, but Harry T. Moore would, would bring in his own materials and teach black history, teach his students about great African Americans. He would teach them how to vote. Harry T. Moore was known for his civil rights activism, uh, uh, not only getting teacher salaries equalized, but he formed the Brevard County branch of the NAACP, started the Progressive Voters League, which was responsible for registering tens of thousands of African Americans to vote. He drove all over the state trying to get justice for African Americans in a time when that was not popular. People ran out of their houses. They thought that the packing house had blown up. Children were cowering in fear. I mean, it was an incredible blast that could be heard um, for miles. We rode up here, a couple of friends of mine, to see what was going on. And this is what we found. The ruins of the house that we were blown away there. The front half of the house was all blown away. What stands out in my memory is the fact that we lost an icon, a national prominent figure as far as Mr. Moore doing what he did. The main question I get is, why was no one ever prosecuted? At that time, anybody who uh, would want to talk about it, their lives were in jeopardy. So they had to be very careful how they even spoke of the incident. But what has happened, they memorialized him by telling the stories about him, by keeping him alive to those that came after, who did not know him. The original idea to secure the property and rebuild a replica of the Moore home came from the state NAACP. The land was secured, money was secured from the state along with the county and the Moore Memorial Park was built and opened in 2004. When the money started to disappear, the budget was tighter, and you were only allowed one earmark. We chose the Moore Center. It was always going back and trying to find win-wins uh, for the uh, county to make that purchase.
I, I can't find the words to express the way I feel. It's just a, a glorious day for me, especially to be able to go back into the house where I grew up and where there was so much love. One of the things that has always been missing has been a place that she called home. Yeah. And so I committed to her uh, on a personal basis that we would get that done. We are here at the uh, Moore's uh, master bedroom. Uh, the bomb that exploded and killed Mr. Moore and fatally injured his wife, Harriet, uh, was placed right about the center of where that bed is. Also sitting near the uh, bookcase, uh, because Mr. Moore was an avid reader and he had a lot of books of his favorite authors, but he used an old raw uh, mechanical typewriter uh, which we were able to locate one similar to the one that he had. Mrs. Moore was uh, a pianist and a very good one, we were told. Uh, so they had a piano in the house. They, they liked music. The whole family uh, seemed to enjoy music. Imagine him listening to that back then, where well, now with the iPods. Right, yeah. Melbourne. His daughter Evangeline said that they had an RCA Victor gramophone, and Mr. Moore enjoyed listening to gospel and jazz music with these old vinyl records that he would play on here. This is a very nice house uh, for that day, even for today. It's about 1,200 square feet. It's a very nice equipped home. It kind of adds testament to the fact that the Moors were middle class uh, blacks during that time there, that uh, he being a principal, she being a teacher, that they could live in, uh, you know, nice, you know, housing. And I thought you normally are greeted by the owners of the home. Looking at various options, I thought, what if we could get some mannequins that was, you know, made especially uh, in the likeness of the Moors and have them placed in the home. I've always been interested in history very much because of my family. When I moved here, I didn't know too much about the history of Florida, and as most people who come here, they sort of think it's all palm trees and beaches. I didn't become aware of Harry T. Moore until it was probably sometime in the 90s. Now, Scott, everybody have their makeup on? Everybody ready to go? Uh-oh, you're getting dressed? She wanted to bring history to life. She came to me because I have done a few plays, and, and we met, and she asked me would I be interested in and just looking at it and seeing what I thought, well, of course, I got intrigued by the characters and then I couldn't put it down. When we started out, we were going to do little vignettes that we could take yeah. to the different houses and it turned into all this. Yeah. I, it grew. Yeah. It grew. It, it, it's gruesome. Yeah. Don't archaeologists do what they do by following footprints? And she said, well, yeah, I think so. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to name it, footprints. Yeah, footprints. That's perfect. And that's, it was perfect. It and was I didn't realize that Martin Luther King Jr. just walked in the footprints of other people. And that's kind of what the story is about, is the people who started the civil rights movement and the people who died for what they believed. 1951, Harriet and Harry T. Moore were murdered for that elusive word, freedom. I've been called America's first civil rights martyr and the spark that ignited the American civil rights movement. I will be portraying Mr. Harry T. Moore. Uh, I think uh, with the work of Mary and the work of Roz, they've captured the true essence of the civil rights movement in Brevard County. Did you know that there were 11 other bombings against black activist families in Florida the year that I was killed? And over 40 during 1951 and 52. You know, when you go back and you look at the his historical footage and photos and film clips from that period and how dogs were unleashed on people just because they wanted equity, just because they wanted to be heard, they wanted to be treated like human beings. And I think that with his involvement and, and with him being such a uh, mouthpiece, that, that we 
uh, that are here today have, a cha have the challenge of making sure that that message continues, that it's conveyed to everyone. In 2009, a black man was elected President of the United States of America. And we stand in, in the, the footprints of giants. When I took the job teaching full-time at Brevard Community College Titusville campus in 2000, having just read Ben Green's book Before His Time, I was very excited about the prospect of having some sort of festival to honor Harry T. Moore's memory since the campus was just uh, two miles from the Moore home site. As active as Harry T. Moore was in the Civil Rights Movement, first and foremost, he was an educator. And I think that his main focus today would be to have people recognize the importance of education, particularly in the African-American community. This guy had dedicated his life and is assassinated and nobody even knows who he is. So to me, the greatest travesty about this, besides the fact they were murdered and the murder was never solved, is that we don't know who they are. Everyone wants to know where they began. How can we help young people realize that? <laughs> That's a big question, it really is. The Moors and the voter registration is very important. He taught his students before they were able to vote how to vote because it has been said since that time that a voteless people is a powerless people. I would hope that there are lessons here that we can learn from the struggle of man to find justice and fairness for their fellow human beings. And that issue will never go away. It's always with us. It may come in different textures and different tones, but it's here. I think the fact that we now have an African-American president would speak volumes to uh, the ripple effect that the work of Harry T. and Harriet V. Moore have had. This is the day, this is the, 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 the proof of the pudding, so to speak. You know, I, I took a couple of tablets to try to sleep last night, but I woke about 4 a.m. I'm very happy at this point right now. And if the female comes together like this, uh, I think we'll be uh, quite pleased with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's put it in there and look here. The suit fits all right, and uh, he looks really nice. <laughs> thank you for all your work down here. Sure, thank absolutely. You. I mean, really, really appreciated that. Now, it turned out. <laughs>